Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter and professional golfer, a uh, master club fitter at Second Swing. And we're outside today. Uh, we have a little bit of an instructional video for you. It's how to hit a fade. And so there's, of course, multiple ways to, to shape the ball uh, during a golf shot. Uh, we've done the how to hit a draw. Today we're going to do how to hit a fade. So uh, the left to right curvature and kind of how to set up, how to swing, and what changes from a stock swing. So we have Thomas Campbell here, of course, uh, to show us how to do that. And so Thomas, first of all, we've got some track man here too, to maybe look at some data points and what changes there. So on your stock swing and then into your fade before we even hit, what are you looking at with uh, you know, your setup and also what numbers on the track man we'll be looking at? So the most important thing with hitting a fade is your club path, your face angle relationship. Okay. So if you want to curve the ball more, those numbers need to be wider, they need to be further apart. Yeah. So for a fade, we need to get our club path to be left of our face angle to okay. generate a left to right curve. So for me, I like to do it through two ways. So through visualization and pre-shot routine. So what I'm trying to do when I'm walking into the ball is I'm trying to visualize that curve from kind of left to right. Yeah. So I walk into the ball where essentially I'm trying to see that thing curve. So I'm walking the ball with an open stance. Okay. And then set up. So I need to set up with my feet, my shoulders, my hips, everything to be open to the target. Okay. My club face is always going to be lined up at the target. Yeah. But my body needs to be aimed left of that target to generate a club path, which is going to feel like it's going to cut across, okay. across the ball a little bit. Nice. So that's the easiest, easiest way for visual, visualization and getting yourself in the right setup. You also can make adjustments to your grip if you really need to curve the ball. You can kind of weaken your, your top hand a little yeah. bit if, if, if you need to. But the relationship between your club path and your face angle is the most important. We need to get a larger face to path, essentially. Yeah. So we need to find a way to get a larger face to path. Okay, well, let's see. We're gonna have you demonstrate for us here. So Thomas is gonna hit some stock swings. Uh, I think seven iron and driver is the plan here. So he's gonna hit uh, stock swings with both and then a fade with both. We're gonna look at the numbers. We're gonna look at the swing differences and we're gonna explain to you guys uh, how to hit a fade. So Thomas, let's get after it. All right, let's do it. straight yeah yeah so that, I mean that was a maybe a slight draw there Thomas uh, maybe but uh, <laughs> well we we're trying to hit it straight right that was 0 0.2 feet of curve so <laughs> there's your stock swing okay so uh, now to hit a fade first of all a fade is would be useful for maybe a hole that has a dog leg to the right maybe the pin is kind of on the right side of the green you kind of want to shape it in there protected by maybe bunkers. So there are lots of situations where a fade can be useful. Um, for you, when you hit a fade, how are you setting up? What are you trying to do maybe with your feet, shoulders, swing plane? How does that change? So the first thing I'm trying to do with regards to, even like starting with pre-shot routine, is when I'm starting to walk myself in to hit a golf shot, I'm kind of walking myself in to try and imagine that I am trying to hit a fade. So notice how I kind of cut across yeah. going from kind of right to left and then I kind of come in here feeling like my body is open, my feet is open and then I get myself kind of aligned. I'm visualizing trying to get that thing to curve from okay. kind of left to right as I'm approaching the golf ball. Yeah. So once I then set up, you'll notice, first thing you'll notice is my feet are going to be aimed a little bit left of the target. My shoulders are also going to aim a little bit left of the target okay. there as well. Um, that is going to get me to change my club path line a little bit. So it'll be a little bit more out to in club yep. path. So hopefully on track band numbers, we'll take a look at my club path. I think, believe it was 2.6 degrees yep. in to out for the, for the stock swing. That number will probably be a smaller number or maybe be like a negative number when I try and hit a fade. Okay. So I'm trying to get myself to kind of cut across the ball a little bit and swing a little bit more yeah. out to in. Trying to produce that side spin to the right, essentially. Exactly. Yeah. So to get an idea, I'm trying to get myself to be lined up 
a little bit more kind of left of the target, a little bit to the left here. And I'm trying to get myself to kind of swing across yeah. that line right there. Yeah, and then of course the, the club face, you don't want to manipulate that, at least at a dress, because you're trying to keep the face still pointed at your target while you're Correct. changing the alignment of your feet, your shoulders, yes. etc. So it's set up, yes, the club face is still lined at the target. I just have my body open a little bit to the left here, and then I'm trying to swing kind of down that club path line there okay. to the left. I'm All not right. really trying to hold the, the grip off or anything like that. I'm still yeah. going to be turning through. If I really needed to hit an exaggerated fade, the grip, what I can definitely do is I can definitely go from my normal grip and maybe kind of adjust it around a little bit more and grip it a little more in the uh, palm of my hand as okay. opposed more in the fingers. That will make it harder for me then to get that club face to turn over yeah. as, as much. But just to try and stock fade, what I gotta do is change my alignment and then swing down that across the across the line to swing essentially. Okay. Yeah. yeah, let's see what you can do here. Okay. Fade's usually a kind of a, a tough one for me. I normally play a little right to left swing with my seven iron. So this okay. would be this would be a good one for me to do. So I'm setting up open as I'm addressing the bowl. Face is aimed at the target. Feet are open, shoulders are open, hips open. And then all I'm trying to do is just swing down that path. That was a nice, yeah? nice, well-struck fade. That was actually pretty, pretty good. Yeah, that's a beautiful trajectory on the track man here. Just a baby little fade there. Your club path is minus 7.6. Face angle minus 3.4 and face to path was 4.3. So uh, that results in kind of a baby fade there. Yeah, that was that was about, about as good as I can do for a for a little fade that I'm that I'm trying to do with regards yep. to visualization, trying to cut across cut across the bowl here. What I had what I had to change was my club path. My club path basically was. 10 degrees further to the left than the swing before. Yep. Everything else stayed the same. Right, yep. and then you had eventually 22 feet of curve to the right. Yep. That is a nice little controlled baby fade. Yep, that was, that was, that was pretty good. Yep, so now what we can do is go to the driver. Okay. So driver, of course, especially on those dog leg rights that we talked about, hitting a driver or a fade with a driver is actually as important, right? Because you want to keep yourself in play. And I know you actually can maybe hit a fade as more of your stock swing with driver versus maybe the irons and wedges in your bag. Um, so maybe we'll try this also with driver, see if you can uh, you know, hit a stock swing and then we'll see how you set up with the, the driver for a fade. Okay, sounds good. I would expect with the driver that I'm able to generate a little bit of more left to right curve with yeah. the driver Should than be with the to. seven iron. There we go. That is dead straight, Thomas. That was pretty straight. That's a pretty good ball. You also ripped at that one. 114 club speed there. I like it. Uh, <laughs> ball speed 172. That's some pretty good numbers there, Thomas. Um, okay, so feet of curve, two and a half to the left. Okay. <laughs> so that's a pretty dead straight ball. Yep. Uh, so looking at these sort of swing numbers, club pass was minus three face angle minus 1.4 to face to pass was 1.8. Yep. So with the uh, driver with it being longer what happens with my club path that it, it goes a little bit more kind of out to end. It is harder for you to swing a little more in yeah. and out with with a driver when it's longer. Yeah. When a club's shorter it's easier for you to swing a little more in and out. Yeah. Yep. So that's why my club path already okay. is negative. Yeah. But I would already I would expect this fade shot that it will probably get even, even more so. More exaggerated yep. and a negative number yep. there, right? So out to end. For the fade we talked about, or I guess you talked about, you're set up, you open your stance a little bit, shoulders a little bit open. Do you do anything differently from, I guess, driver and seven iron with hitting a fade, or is it mostly the same just with a longer golf club? It's very, very similar. It's just a little longer club, I'd expect maybe the ball to fade a little bit more yeah. than with the uh, with the shorter club. Okay. Yep. Yeah, let's see what we can do here. Okay. So same thing, I'm visualizing myself to hit that thing to start left and go to the right. Yeah. So as I'm walking in here, I'm kind of walking in here with the idea that I'm trying to be kind of open to the target. Okay. So 
walk in, open myself up a little bit here. Get the face aimed at the target. And then my feet and my shoulders are going to be a little bit to the left. And then I'm just trying to swing down that line yep. with regards to my path. Oh yeah. There it is. That'll work on a dog leg right. That would work on a dog leg right, you're right. <laughs> yeah. And so one thing we didn't mention too much with a seven iron, but it does, it's true for both seven iron and driver, is that the distance and the spin will change when you're trying to hit a fade versus maybe a stock swing. So both, you know, your spin should go up, right? and then your carry distance will probably decrease, your total distance will probably decrease as you try to hit a fade because you're kind of putting that extra spin on the ball. That is correct. So back spin on the ball when you curve it left to right, the ball is going to spin more than if it's going flying a little bit straighter. So I would expect the ball to probably have more spin with a fade and not go quite as far. In yeah. fittings, I always talk about spin is king. I'm trying to fit a player for their, to get them in the ideal with regards to the ideal spin rate. Yeah. I'm going to guess it's a little higher with the driver and with the, and the seven iron. Is that correct? Yes, yes. So the, it's actually especially noticeable with the seven iron. Yep. The spin was up about 11 to 1200 RPM okay. and then it jumped up about a little over 100, almost 200 RPM with the driver. Yep. So, um, and I mean, that's still a really good number. I mean, you still hit the, the fade 300 yards uh, with your driver. And uh, we did see again that spin went up and we can talk. I want to ask or look at your club path. We talked about right. The driver was minus three, and then you said you'd, it'd be a lot more exaggerated, probably more, um, I guess, lower number technically with a negative. 14.7, minus 14.7. Okay. And so you're really trying to exaggerate a fade, of course, and it really worked. Um, so, so both of my swings, when I tried to hit a fade, had about 10 degrees more left to right or yep. kind of out to in uh, path. Yep. So on TrackMan, you're going to see that number be more negative. Mm -hmm. um, if it goes to club path, and then I'm going to essentially be able to then get that thing to leave my face open to that path, and then the ball is going to curve to the right. Yep, yep, absolutely. Yep, you, as you said, 2.6 in the positive, the club path with the 7 iron, minus 7.6 for the fade with the 7 iron, and then we went from minus 3 to minus 14.7 with the driver. So you're right, 10 to 11 ish degrees of difference there on the swing on your club path and that's just that's how you hit the fade that's that that's kind of the the simple version of how to hit a hit how to hit a fade um, I mentioned grip you can definitely kind of make a little bit of adjustments with regards to yep. grip if you change your ball position up if you move the ball position kind of further forward and your in your stance your path is going to start more to the left yeah as long as you leave that face open then that's another way to kind of mm -hmm. hit a hit a fade there as well um, but really, it's, it's the difference between your club path and your face angle and how you generate that to generate the, the curve. Yep. Most, now, most golfers that I, that I know, they struggle a little bit more with the left to right shot than the right to left shot. Yeah. So this is good to know how to hit it kind of left to right when you need to. Um, a lot of times, you, it's a little easier for you to really see the exaggeration when I'm trying to hit a draw, for example. Yeah. Okay, so Drew, you've seen me hit. I know you may not be completely kind of warmed up right now, but I do <laughs> want to see you try and hit a fade. So I want okay. to try and kind of educate you and go through those steps again to try and get that ball to curve left to right. Okay. I'm heading you my driver here and get you to hit a shot and see what happens. All right, sweet. So Drew, let's first start with visualization. Okay. Kind of work, walking into the, into, the, into the ball. So I like to kind of walk in from, from back here from where I'm trying to look to hit, hit my shot. So I mentioned I try and work my, walk my way kind of left to right and then kind of leave my body kind of open like okay. this. That's a good way to kind of start. So let's just kind so of see. Sort kind of, of, so you're lining yourself up here as yep. if it's left of the actual target. Exactly. So I'm trying to get my, my alignment to be a little bit left, but the club okay. face is going to be aimed at the target. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to so step in. Step in right here. Put, line the club up at the target, but then yep. leave myself open. Leave yourself open. And then, okay, so I'm trying to set up now, as you said, a little bit open of Perfect. the target. 
So first line right here, you can see feet is aimed now to the left, which is great. So you can see that your target would be more in that direction. So we can kind of see that your feet is aimed to, to the left there yep. as well. And then you want your shoulders to also be down that line. So you want your shoulders to be, yeah, exactly, just a little bit open there as well. All right. And then I just want to see you kind of swing down that path line. All right. And let's just see, let's see a nice gentle little fade. That was really, that's curving right back to the target. Very nice. I think that's okay. Yeah, that was, that was good. Yep, we've got a great fade there. You got that thing to start you left maybe, of your target. Yeah. Um, so your club path there, what do you think your club path number was, was right there? You, would you See, I guess? feel like I maybe pull, I, I pulled it a little left of maybe where I, I, you I guess start where it? I was looking. Yep. But uh, I mean, I'm going to guess higher than yours, like 16, 17? Yeah, so you said you pulled a little bit. It was actually minus 20. <laughs> so it was 20 degrees to the left. Your face angle was also negative because it's pretty hard to get your face 20 degrees open to that. Otherwise, it would literally have ended up over there. Yeah. But your face to path was open. That was that was the key right there. So that one, you got 98 feet of curve to the right. So that's right. pretty good. That, that, that was excellent there. That is moving the ball. Yep. Uh, that thing carried 280 going 295 with a bit of a fade. Yours is a good example right there. We'll see what happens with regards to spin when the ball curves a little bit more to the right. So the spin rate on that one's 3,600 RPMs. Okay. So a little higher spin. Yeah. By the way, you hit that thing right in the middle of the face. Did 151 I? smash. Okay. You might have to get this driver checked out. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that, was, that was good. That's so. good. I actually, I see, I need a shot that I can control and hit repeatedly. Uh, and that seems to be kind of a go-to there, a nice, easy fade. So, Thomas, thanks for the instruction. Yep. I have something I can work on now and help me off the tee a little bit. And golfers out there as well, uh, the, the fade is, you know, it can be a go-to shot off the tee, go-to shot shape. So, you've, give, you've heard the and seen the instruction here from Thomas on how to do that. Something for you to work on in the golf course. So, uh, Thomas, thanks for showing me how to do that. Yeah, no problem.